What's up, my comic comrades? With Godzilla X Kong, the new empire about to hit theaters, we wanted to show some love to the king of all apes himself by giving King Kong his very own History of episode. It's a bit overdue considering we gave Godzilla his own History of episode many years ago. So today we're going to take a stroll down memory lane, so to speak, and look at Kong through the years to see how the world's most famous ape got his start and how he's evolved. King Kong was created by Marion C. Cooper, who co-directed King Kong's 1933 original film with Ernest E. Schudzak. If that is in fact how you pronounce his last name. The crazy thing about King Kong is that it was released right in the middle of the Great Depression, which started in 1929 and lasted until 1941. But here's the kicker, it performed extremely well in theaters despite being released during one of the worst economic times in American history. I'm sure the public's need for escapism from the crappy state of things in the country played a part in that, but the other big draw was that the visual effects and storytelling methods in King Kong were revolutionary in 1933. In fact, it's one of a handful of films that changed how movies were made and what you could do with them. At the time, giant monster movies weren't commonplace yet, and nothing had ever really been done like this. Hell, Godzilla wouldn't even be created until over two decades later in 1954. So the crown for the first King of Monsters actually belongs to King Kong, and the success of this milestone movie kicked off a whole new genre. But going back to the visual effects, the stop motion used for King Kong was also revolutionary at the time. It was done by special effects great Willis H. O'Brien. He had previously worked on The Lost World in 1925, which is an iconic film in its own right, and it's where O'Brien's pioneering work in stop motion began. With King Kong, he just took it up to the next level. Remember, this was was decades before computers, CGI, and other modern VFX techniques. So in the 30s, this stop-motion King Kong and the incredible use of forced perspective was mind-blowing for audiences. Now let's talk about the story, more specifically King Kong's origin or backstory, which for the most part has stayed intact over the decades. Kong is the name given to a massive ape by the people who live on the mysterious Skull Island located somewhere off the coast of Indonesia. Skull Island is unlike any other place on Earth where strange and mysterious creatures roam, including dinosaurs, which is how we get the iconic scene of Kong fighting a T-Rex in the 33 film, and then multiple T-Rexes in Peter Jackson's 2005 remake. Anyway, the original story follows director Carl Denham, who takes a film crew and actress, Ann Darrow, to Skull Island in search of a legendary monster, which he hopes to get on film for his new project. Once on the island, they learn that the monster is a giant ape known as Kong, and during their first encounter, he quickly becomes infatuated with actress Ann and kidnaps her. At this point, Carl is like, we gotta get her back, and so the film crew start a rescue mission, but along the way, they face all the dangers Skull Island has to offer, like, you know, prehistoric insects and other giant creatures. Somehow, they eventually manage to rescue Anne and capture Kong, bringing him back to New York City to turn him into an attraction called King Kong, Eighth Wonder of the World. However, when Carl unveils Kong to the world and the press starts taking pictures, the flashes enrage Kong, and he breaks free from his chains, wreaking havoc in New York before capturing Anne and climbing the Empire State Building with her. Kong then safely sets Anne aside as he battles machine gun fire from swarming planes which has since become one of the most iconic moments in all of film. But after taking large amounts of machine gunfire, Kong loses his grip and falls to his death. Carl Denham then walks to Kong's body as a police lieutenant says, Well, Denham, the airplane's got him. Denham responds with what has become one of the most iconic lines in movie history. Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. But that sums up Kong's origin story that for the most part has stayed intact over the years. It also cemented Kong's love for blondes. You know, don't hate the player, hate the game. Anyway, since his theatrical debut, Kong has been featured in a total of 10 different films. 1933's King Kong, Son of Kong, King Kong vs. Godzilla, King Kong Escapes, 1976 King Kong, King Kong Lives, the 2005 King Kong remake, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla vs. Kong, and now Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. So let's break down some of the more significant ones like the sequel to the 1933 King Kong, which released the same exact year. Son of Kong follows Carl Denham, the filmmaker responsible for bringing Kong to New York City, and how he's facing lawsuits and potential financial ruin due to all the damage Kong caused in New York. Because of this, Denham goes back to Skull Island, hoping to find treasure to solve his problems. And while you think he would have learned from the first time, he arrives only to realize that it's not going to be that simple. This time he runs into a much smaller and friendlier ape, who he names Little Kong, or Son of Kong. Denham and singer Miss Peter who he brought with him because he always has to have a pretty girl with him on Skull Island, helps free little Kong from quicksand. After this, while Denim and Helene are looking for treasure, Son of Kong defends them from all sorts of threats that are on the island. So much so that the film ends with Kong's son sacrificing himself to save Denim and Helene. It's another great addition to the franchise and does a good job of expanding the idea that Kong and his kind can have an empathetic relationship with humans. You know what else is a solid addition for King Kong fans? Collectible toys. And today's sponsor, Playmates, has created an awesome new lineup of action figures around the Godzilla Kong 
movie. Playmates is an awesome company that's created iconic toy lines for fan love franchises like TMNT. And recently, Playmates sent us over these highly detailed six inch basic figures and the awesome seven inch battle roar figures, which are pretty fun. The six inch Godzilla Kong line includes Godzilla Evolved with a detachable heat ray, Kong with beast glove, Scar King with whip slash, and Suko with Titanus Doug figure. Each one features multiple points of articulation so you can display or recreate favorite scenes from their epic battles. Every detail is made to match the new movie, ensuring a legit representation of these iconic characters. And then if you want to go all out, you can get their seven inch roar line that has sound effects. These fun toy figures are molded from soft rubber to create a realistic expression as they roar. All you gotta do is press the button on the figure's back and unleash the classic Godzilla roar. Playmates Toys also has other items for Godzilla Kong The New Empire, like masks and miniature collectibles. And you can buy your Godzilla Kong action figures at your local Walmart or check our link in the description below for some Titan action. Now returning to our classic Kong films, in 1963, we got King Kong versus Godzilla. This was the very first time audiences got to see King Kong battle the King of Monsters. And while the plot of the movie is ridiculous, it was a huge moment for what would later become known as the Monsterverse. I mean, I saw it as a kid nearly 30 years after its release, and it still blew my mind. The story essentially focuses on a company called Pacific Pharmaceutical who wants to boost the viewership on a TV show the company is sponsoring. And to accomplish that, they decided to find and capture King Kong, who now resides on Faro Island. At the same time, a United Nations submarine named the Seahawk accidentally awakens Godzilla from his icy slumber when it collides with an iceberg he was buried in. So he claws his way out and makes his way to shore, where he's greeted by a barrage of heavy artillery from the Japanese military. But the incoming fire only makes Godzilla more angry, and he starts destroying everything and wreaking havoc all through Japan. As for Kong, Pacific succeeds in capturing him, but he eventually breaks free from his restraints and starts making his way to Japan, where he comes face to face with Godzilla for the very first time. Like I said, it's all super cheesy with a guy in an obvious monkey suit playing Kong and another guy in an obvious dinosaur suit playing Godzilla and the two are fighting each other. But honestly, those things give it a charm that makes it fun and at times really hilarious. I mean, the part at the end where Kong gets flown in to fight Godzilla with giant balloons towed by helicopters is utterly just monster movie gold. But the biggest takeaway here is that this is the first time King Kong fought Godzilla, which was a milestone in movie history and set the stage for big things to follow. In the end, their battle leads to a showdown on top of Mount Fuji, where Kong gets the advantage by using electricity to charge himself up and then uses the electricity to weaken Godzilla with lightning strikes. I mean, obviously. The battle ends with Kong and Godzilla falling into the ocean while fighting each other, and Kong eventually emerges with no sign of Godzilla, making King Kong the last man standing, so to speak. But Godzilla wasn't dead, of course, he just vanished back into the ocean. So Kong took round one, but fast forward to 2021, where Godzilla would get his revenge in Godzilla vs. Kong. And this time, he would reclaim his title of King of Monsters in a brutal rematch, where after dropping and pinning Kong, Godzilla stands over him and roars in Kong's face as if to say, stay down. I won. Kong yields and Godzilla does let him live. And right after he takes his foot off and walks away, you get the impression that he has respect for Kong as a fellow protector and Titan. Now there were a few other Kong movies after the first Kong vs. Godzilla, including a couple of remakes. With the first released in 1976, starring Jeff Bridges and Jessica Lange. And the second and probably most notable remake dropping in 2005, which starred Jack Black, Naomi Watts, Adrian Brody, and Andy Serkis, and was directed by Peter Jackson. In fact, this epic three hour King Kong remake was Jackson's next movie after completing the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So expectations were insanely high for this movie at the time. And while the reactions to this movie were somewhat mixed at the time, I think it's more than held up and has even become more appreciated over the years. At the bare minimum, it gave us the scene where we got to see Kong battle two T-Rexes, which is still just glorious to watch. Either way, it absolutely laid the groundwork for Kong's place in Legendary's current MonsterVerse, starting with Kong Skull Island in 2017. With Kong's return in Skull Island, we get a slightly reshaped version of his origin, and this time it's set in the post-Vietnam era of the early 70s. As the story unfolds, we find out that Kong is part of a race of huge gorilla titans that lived on Skull Island. But over time, the evil giant lizard-like skull crawlers who live beneath the surface of Skull Island have wiped out the entire race, leaving Kong as the sole surviving member. So now Kong has dedicated his life to avenging his race by keeping the island's skull crawlers population in check, killing them whenever he can, and defending other creatures of the island who have come to see him as their protector and king. We then meet Bill Rand 
Miranda, played by the always awesome John Goodman, who is head of the US government agency Monarch and obsessed with Skull Island. So he plans an expedition to the island in search of mysterious creatures and titans. And when they arrive, he and his crew obviously find what they're looking for and more, including coming face to face with the mighty Kong. They obviously find themselves on the run and in the middle of massive monster fights, followed by Randa eventually being killed by a skull crawler. But some of the crew are able to survive and escape the island, including James Conrad and Mason Weaver, who are played by Loki and Captain Marvel. You see what I did there? After Kong defeated the Alpha Skull Crawler. After that, we flash forward to Godzilla vs. Kong which is set in the present day, and we learn that Kong is now closely monitored by Monarch, who has now sealed off Skull Island with some kind of protective dome that makes the National Stadium in Singapore look like a joke. Anyway, they eventually let Kong out after they realize they need his help to lead them to Hollow Earth. But as Kong is being transported on a cargo ship, Godzilla is able to sniff him out and is basically like, you're bringing another Titan in my waters? Nah, not today you're not. He then attacks both the ship and Kong. The setting for the fight is pretty great and makes for some very cool moments both in and out of of the water, including Kong leapfrogging across several ships so that he can battle Godzilla on the deck of an aircraft carrier. This first fight ends with Godzilla dragging Kong deep into the ocean, nearly drowning him, and while he manages to break free thanks to some help from the Navy, Godzilla seals his victory when they meet again later in the movie as I described earlier. However, in the climax of the film, they would team up and take down Mecha Godzilla, setting things up for Godzilla x Kong the New Empire. With the new movie, it appears that Godzilla and Kong will be teaming up yet again, this time to fight a Titan orangutan known as the Scar King and Shimo. Kong is also wielding some kind of metal gauntlet along with a battle axe, and I'm gonna tell you right now, we're here for it. But let's change gears a bit. Even though Kong is known for being on the silver screen, he's also graced the small screen and comics. I know some of you will remember the Mighty Kong animated musical movie that was released straight to home video in 1998. It was one of those movies I've never seen all the way through, but I would watch it in pieces when it was aired on TV. It was a guilty pleasure, what can I tell you? Anyway, here's a real flash from the past. Who remembers the epic Kong animated series from 2000 that lasted for two seasons. It was so good. The series revolves around a young scientist named Dr. Lorna Jenkins, who takes a DNA sample from Kong after his death at the Empire State Building and clones him with the DNA from her grandson. They then discover a way to communicate with Kong through a special device called a Cyberlink. The Cyberlink allows them to share thoughts and emotions with Kong, forming a deep bond with the ape. From here, Dr. Jenkins and her team, including her grandson Jason, use the Cyberlink to set out on various missions to protect the Earth from threats, both natural and supernatural. It was a very underrated series in my opinion and was cut short too soon. However, when 2005 came around and Peter Jackson's King Kong remake was coming out, the suits wanted to capitalize on this in any way possible. So they created and released a continuation of the series in an animated movie called Kong King of Atlantis, followed by a sequel in 2006 called Kong Return to the Jungle. So at least they gave the story from the Kong animated series some extra life. A number of years later, Netflix got in on the act and released another animated series titled Kong King of the Apes. The series was decent and had enough success that it was given a second season. So if you have young ones that are interested in Kong, this is a good intro series. And most recently, we have the Skull Island animated series, which is also on Netflix. It premiered in 2023 and is within the MonsterVerse continuity. It's actually the first TV series connected to the MonsterVerse, with the second being Monarch on Apple TV. The Skull Island series is a sequel to Kong Skull Island. It takes place in the 90s, where a group of explorers find themselves shipwrecked on Skull Island, and as you could imagine, they're trying to stay alive from all of its monsters and threats until they ultimately run into the island's protector, Kong. This is an animated series I highly recommend you watch as it's very well done and ties directly into the MonsterVerse continuity. And lastly for TV, we have the previously mentioned Monarch Legacy of Monsters Apple TV series. The series mainly focuses on Godzilla and other titans, but the very beginning of the series starts off with John Goodman reprising his role as Bill Randa on Skull Island in 1973, where we see him just barely escape two titans, but not before losing his video and other files that documented what he found on Skull Island. Overall, the series wasn't as good as we hoped, but it did add some more depth to the new MonsterVerse, so it's worth a watch. As for comics, Kong has appeared in a plethora of comics over the years. Anyway, here are a few of our faves. First, we have a classic nod to the great ape in Superman 138. Again, this is not Kong, it's Titano, the super ape. But he's certainly molded after Kong. Superman even says it on the cover as the quote reads, King Kong was only a make-believe gorilla menace, but Titano is real, and his kryptonite vision prevents me from capturing him. So Kong had made 
such a big impact on pop culture, even Superman had to reference him. But as for actual King Kong appearances in comics, I mainly like the legendary MonsterVerse comics, which tie into the films, fleshing out the world and monsters more. The first one we have is Skull Island, The Birth of Kong. It's a four issue miniseries that reveals events both before and after Kong Skull Island, the movie. It also expands Kong's origin with a look at how Kong's race was killed off by the skull crawlers. Kong's parents were the last two to survive and we see Kong's dad holding off the skull crawlers while Kong's mom was giving birth to Kong. Once Kong was born, his mother took him to a cave and hid him there. He then watched through a hole as his parents were slaughtered by the skull crawlers. Once the skull crawlers left, he walked over to his now dead parents and wept. It's pretty tragic and explains why he hates the skull crawlers so much. If you think about it, Kong is basically the dark knight of the monsterverse. Skull Island is his Gotham City. I'm just saying it was right there in front of us the whole time. But the main point is if you like the monsterverse, you need to read this book. After that, we also have Kingdom Kong. It's a prequel to Godzilla vs. Kong and gives more details on how Monarch attempted to find its way into Hollow Earth. There's also a prequel comic series to Godzilla x Kong called Godzilla x Kong The Hunted that just dropped and will fill in some gaps leading into the new movie. And the last comic we're going to mention is Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong. We're currently covering this entire series on the channel right now, so check it out right here. It's been fantastic thus far, putting the DC universe against Kong, Godzilla, and the entire monsterverse. They use this series to do some crazy stuff too, like Kong apparently is becoming a Green Lantern by the end of the series, which is insane. And Batman's building a giant Godzilla busting mech suit to fight the King of Monsters. It's Saturday morning level fun, but let's shift gears once again and look at Kong's powers and abilities. First off, he's a giant ape. As of Godzilla versus Kong, he's a whopping 335 feet tall. Now, normal gorillas can lift around 10 times their own body weight, and Kong weighs in the neighborhood of 50,000 tons, meaning he could lift around a half a million tons. But besides what he benches, he has super reflexes, stamina, senses, endurance, vision, speed, agility, durability, and he has an accelerated healing factor. Kong is also incredibly smart. The dude straight up knows how to use weapons like a human and even knows sign language. Basically, what it all comes down to is Kong is the closest thing to a human titan we have, as gorillas are the animal species closest to humans. Also, Kong is the Batman of the MonsterVerse. I have spoken. As for reading recommendations, check out Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong, Skull Island, The Birth of Kong, Kingdom Kong, Godzilla x Kong The Hunted, and out of all the King Kong movies you could watch, you gotta watch the original from 1933 if you've never seen it. That's monster movie history right there. But there you have it, friends, the history of King Kong. Let us know what your favorite Kong movie, show, or comic is, and whether you're excited for Godzilla x Kong. I know we are. Other than that, we'll see you next time when we talk about all things comics.